And welcome to our May edition of Sports Highlights as we continue on the road, this time outside social distancing. Of course, nope, everybody's being safe. Our program airs on Mondays at 7 a.m., 2 p.m., 7 p.m., weekends at 9 a.m. on Cox Cable 47, 517, along with Elijah Price and Ray Price. We have our featured guest this month of May, Larry Davis, who played on the Heritage State Championship team way back in 2000, who's a guidance counselor now at the Achievable Dream. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Before we talk about the Achievable Dream in the next segment, let's talk about how you got started in football. Okay, so it's a long story. It seems years, uh, forever ago. Um, started at Doris Miller, downtown Newport News. Uh, played there from, what, uh, the leagues were labeled A American and B, B American. So all of the leagues, the Dora Miller, Doris Miller, um, then moved on to Heritage, of course. Played there for four years, and you know things just kept going from there. It's really <laughs> true because you get your fundamentals there, and that kind of helps you as you evolve. Definitely, definitely. Uh, not long ago, I was a coach uh, assisting with the you know rec league around this area, and the fundamentals are definitely some things that are, are being missed and not touched on. So I think that that's very vi very vital for our uh, student athletes, you know, nowadays. And you put the time into it to make it work. You just can't show up the first day of practice or on the day of the game. It's all about year-round conditioning. Definitely. Mental conditioning as well as physical conditioning. Um, you know, understanding and knowing exactly what's expected of you and the things that you need to do moving forward. We're talking to Larry Davis, of course. His nickname is Choo Choo. Tell us how that got started. Okay, so uh, my mom was pregnant and you know back in the day when where, where my, my father was around he um, he nicknamed me when mom sneezed choo choo so that's how the name came about and one thing I remember about you when you were in high school Nate and I used to talk about it was how consistent you were you liked consistently doing a routine order regimen and John Quillen was the perfect person for that definitely uh, so <clears throat> um, I know for me uh, I mean like pre-game pre I always ate sunflower seeds, and you know some of the minor things, but I always ate sunflower seeds and prep. Um, Listen to some of the music that you know that kind of pumped me up. And uh, I, I know you know for uh, some of us guys, we used to work out season uh, prior to the season. Um, Jason Cook, uh, Michael Johnson, some of us used to work out before the season started. So those are some of the things that we you know we built upon uh, to, to to show the the outstanding work that we did at the end. And you went on to Morgan State. Johnson went on to uh, Virginia, of course. Yes. Cook went to James Madison, correct? That's correct. So a lot of y'all went on to different colleges. Yes, we all went on. We all stayed in contact, and we're still in contact with each other. So it's just a bond that we'll never, we'll never be, you know, breaking. Look, folks, Aaron Brooks played for the Saints and the Packers. Michael Vick had a 30 for 30 on ESPN, played for Virginia Tech, and, of course, the Falcons. And, of course, Antoine Buffet has played for several teams. But guess what? The state champion was right here, Larry Davis, 2000. And every school is measured for that 2000 state championship team. I mean, Ferguson won it in basketball back in the day. You won it in football. And it's like no matter what our teams do now, there's an asterisk. They haven't won the state championship. Yeah, and that's something we're very proud of. Um, like I said, we, we definitely put the work in. We, we saw the potential, but we had no idea of the impact it would have on the city and, you know, on the school system altogether. But we knew that we were, you know, playing and working hard for each other. And the outcome was, you know, is, has been tremendous. And you look at the foundation, Larry, you know this firsthand. A couple of years prior, you guys had went 9-1 and one and didn't even make the postseason right. under Kurt Newsom. Yes, yes. And, and again, we, I mean, us, th those of us who, who, uh, who did actually win the, the championship, we'll credit a lot of the people before us because we know, you know, without that foundation, without that leadership, you know, Terrence Patrick and those guys, we know without them, 
they would have, you know, planted the seed in our head. So we still appreciate them for, you know, for, for the, 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 the impact they had on us. Then the year before, you made the postseason. You had a very good team in 99 as well. Yes, yes. Um, and also uh, at that, that year, also our uh, JV team, they, they went undefeated. So that was uh, under um, – uh, Hagens, Coach Hagens. So the, again, those things transferred over to us. It, it was just, it was, it was amazing how things worked together and came together. Talking to Larry Davis, known as Choo Choo, right here, and you talk about that. That Mike Smith and Dennis Kozlowski, who coached at Hampton and Bethel, always had some of their better freshmen playing varsity. And Quillen started doing a little bit of that, too, when he was at Denby and also at Heritage as well. But that 2000 team, from the jump, was special. It evolved. The players matured. The coaching staff was on the same page. Mm -hmm. And it really took a whole village to make it work. Indeed, indeed. And like I said, that, that JV team um, under Coach Hagens and a few other guys, it just transferred over. It was some of the same principles, you know, the, the, the JV coaches as well as the uh, varsity coaches. They all worked together, all had a you know, common understanding, and, uh, you know, winning was always the goal for everyone. So think, things just, you know, kind of transferred over and worked out well. You know, we were doing a lot of the games live, but I remember that what stood out that year is you played Hampton twice that year in 2000. Yes. And that was always a big rivalry. This place has not been packed since. <laughs> yeah. I'm not joking either. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I, I remember um, – I do remember that some footage from you know from you all, and one of the things that stand out to me and still to this day was uh, I think they had that that horn cart. You know Hampton had that cart with the horn when they scored, and before the game was over, you guys have footage of them packing their cart and putting it away before the game was over, and that that was that was a good feeling for us. Yeah, one of those games we simulcast in Newport News and Hampton both, but back in the day when Bethel played Hampton, Bethel would either deliver crabs to Hampton or vice versa and they'd crush the crabs. Okay. But that was a great rivalry because really when you think about it, Heritage and Hampton are closer than any school in Newport News or Hampton combined. Yes, yes. So you knew a lot of those guys firsthand. We did, we did. Um, we would run into them different places and you know, you know, talk to them and you know, keep the rivalry going. Of course, it was always a, you know, a back and forth thing, but it's always been, you know, on the field and sports. Um, but it's still, again, even to, to this day, we have uh, some good relationships with some of those guys as well, you know, and we always respect each other. So It was like the old Newport News versus Hampton rivalry as we're talking to Larry Davis. As far as uh, some of the players that played on that team, do you keep in touch with them now, like Michael Johnson and so forth? Yes, um, Michael, I think maybe a few, not long ago, Mike, Michael had texted me, um, you know, we'll check on each other, our families, you know, and whatnot. Um, I'm in a chat with some of the guys who I communicate with daily. So we always talking, we're always talking and, you know, reminiscing sometimes. I mentioned John Quillen, he did coach Denby, but he, uh, before you got there, not too far before you got there in the late 80s, but uh, he also had two stints at Heritage. Mm -hmm. It was John Quillen part one and then John Quillen part two. Right. But both teams benefited from him. Definitely. Uh, he, he's, a, he's an amazing guy, great coach. And he does some wonderful things for, you know, just for the students uh, and, and athletes all together. It, it's some, some great principles that he, you know, he instills in us. And, you know, he's, to us, we look up or look at him, look at him as a legend, you know. Yeah, and a mentor and so forth. One of the <laughs> few coaches that have won a state championship. And one thing about John Quillen was he was very humble. He's been on this show before and a real gentleman through and through. Before we talk in the next segment about your guidance counselor stuff that you're doing today, the kids back then didn't have as many distractions. The phone was not a distraction. Yeah. The internet was not a distraction back then. Yeah. Today it is. Definitely. And that's I think that definitely shows. Don't you agree? I agree. I agree. I think a lot... Uh, a lot of times, that, you know, the, the kids this, th these days are more into looking at what others are doing as opposed to going out and trying to do things themselves. Um, again, I, like I said, I think for, for us, we wanted to be better. In order to be better, yeah, you have to do your research, but you have to ex execute it as well. And it's preparation and planning. I remember talking to Anthony Solomon that played for Warwick, and he played for Virginia, and he said he'd wake up down in the southeast community at 5 o'clock in the morning, go play basketball one-on-one, -on -one, sometimes on a, a net or no net. Right. But you made it happen by yourself. Yes. yes. That desire has got to be there. It has to be there. That was, those are the days in which, um, you know, I like – like for my son, he doesn't have those same opportunities. I remember, um, I don't remember the neighborhood Wood song, 
but that was a, that was where I grew up. The place Wood Song and Newsom Park. Every day, like you said, you wake up. You. It's not. Are you going to play today? Is when? When is everyone going to meet up? Meet up? And those are the things that honed you as a as a young you know young team to get better. You didn't know that was that's what you were doing. You were out there to have fun, but you were challenging each other. And you were getting better. Now, how did you rise above that confidence? Because you had two solid parents that helped as well. But a lot of times, these kids' self esteem is lacking today. Yes. that's very important. Um, so one thing I, I, I usually credit is my, um, my my school counselors, you know, Dr. Bird, uh, Mr. Watson. Those are some great guys who has instilled a lot of, of positive positivity in me. Um, my, like I said, I was, you know, I was raised in a single home with my mom, but um, the guys who, who who were around were very 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 fortunate. I was very fortunate to have them. And you know, to this day, I, I like I said, I stay in communication with a lot of people. You know, Mr. Ro Mr. Watson, um, Coach uh, Coach Bird. You know, back then was Coach Bird. Coach Robinson. He's now over uh, across the water. I think Landstown still coaching over there. So those are some guys who, like I said, they were for they were there for us, not just as an athlete. You know, um, but you know, for everything, Coach Newsom, I'll never forget. You know, he made a phone call that that you know it was a big phone call that changed my life. So, you know, those guys are, are some people I really appreciate. And Coach Newsom, of course, he coached Kickatan too, and Heritage, and of course, he went on to Virginia Tech as an assistant coach. Yeah. But you kind of got your maturity as a kid growing up with your mother there. Yes, yeah. So, I, one thing I can say I remember is. Uh, my, I have a younger brother. Um, my younger brother is 11 years younger than me, I believe. And one of the things I had to do early on was to take him to daycare while I was in high school. So I would have to wake up extra early, take him to daycare, come home, and you know help uh, and, and then get myself ready for school. So those are some things that I. It was just natural because it was part of the family. It's things, just things that you do anyway. So. It wasn't a big deal to me, but when I look back on it now, it's like, okay, yeah, that played a role in, you know, my, my, my level of maturity and my responsibility uh, improve. It's really just how you start your day every day. Yes, yes. Very good. All right, that's part one of our interview with Larry Davis, known as Choo Choo, played on the state championship team for Heritage 20 years ago, right on this field, right here at Todd Stadium. Sports Highlights May Show will continue after these messages. How about this nice ring and jacket you got here? Let's take a look at this ring right here. Let's uh, talk about that ring and what does it mean to you when you wear that every day? I wear it every day, like you said. It means too much to me. I mean, what's it say? It says Heritage Hurricane State Champions. I have 14 and 0 right here. You'll probably be wearing this jacket during the summertime too, won't you? You better believe it. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs>
and Nate and I and the broadcast crew had it set up that we were out in the stands right outside there. So we were actually social distancing before all this went on, thanks to the great production team by our staff at NNPS TV, talking to Larry Davis. Larry, you talk about uh, the bond of a football team that can sustain for the rest of your life. Yeah, it already has. Uh, I've got some God kids that, that, that I've you know, acquired through our bonds and friendships. So, um, and same thing for my son. Uh, he already looks up to what he calls his uncles. Um, that's part of the reason he says he wants to play football now. So he likes that, you know, we still communicate regularly and he, he, he really appreciates it. So my guys know we love each other. We, 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 we you know, we built this bond from what, uh, over 20 years, but some of us have known each other before, for, before we've done this. And, I, and again, it's just, it's amazing, you know, what, what it's done for us. Did you watch some of Aaron Brooks's games and Michael Vick's before you? We did, but it, to, again, it wasn't, the, it wasn't the main thing. Like we, of course, we looked up to him. Um, some of the highlights and things like that, we, we, you know, we really appreciated those. But we knew for ourselves, we had to find out what worked for us, you know. So again, you know, we always applaud them. You know, again, they are founders of some of the things in Nooper News. So we definitely appreciate it. But we knew we had to do things that worked for us and build our own brand. Yeah, because football is a team sport and state championship has a lot of credibility. Yes. Um, Again, we had no idea of the impact of things that, you know, what was to come. We only knew we were doing what we were supposed to do, things that we were taught, things that we strive for, things that we knew, like I said, the year before, some of those those seniors deserve a lot of the credit, you know, so we wanted to make sure we show, you know, some appreciation, some appreciation for them. Before we talk about routines, how about your memories of Morgan State? Morgan State, I, I, I enjoyed it. Um, the, the school and the campus was a great experience. Um, <clears throat> it was a lot of challenges in, in other ways there. Um, you know, for one, being away for the first time, you know, mm-hmm. getting away from home. Um, with the exception of my prep school experience, it was it was different. It was different. Baltimore, Maryland is, is different. You know? But Fork Union prepared you a little bit. It did a lot, a lot actually. Um, I learned a lot of different, you know, studying type skills from uh, from Fork Union. A lot more discipline than I'd ever experienced in my life, which I think has a lot to do with you know how I carry things now. Now, individual sports like track, we're on a track field predominantly right here. You have to have self-motivation and desire you know, for individual sports. For a team sport, you have to play your part to help the other team because if you right. fall short, you're messing up the entire team right. for that preparation. What advice would you give for any kid or adult that wants to play a team sport as far as playing your part to make the team better? Um, I think my advice would be to, you know, to look in the mirror first. You have to know this is what you want. It's easy to say it, but you have to know, you know, this is what you want. You have to go out and execute. You have to prove it to yourself. Once you believe in yourself and you know this is what you want to do, everything else will fall in place. You know, I, you just have to make sure you're doing it for the right reason and the reason should be for yourself. And then once you're doing it, it, it it's kind of like the Transformers. Everybody does their part, but it comes together. So much of life is not just mental, but it's physical. Physical workout, emotional, spiritual, all play a part together to make you as a whole person. But I think right there to get you an edge over your competition in an individual sport or a team sport, you have to, like you say, look in the mirror and do your own workouts when nobody's watching. When nobody's watching, definitely. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, like I said, I, I have a... I have a 13 year old and he he wants to play sports right now. So this is a time for him to start preparing himself. And I would say that for everyone else, don't take any time lightly, you know, take advantage, um, take advantage of your time, use it wisely. And um, <clears throat> and uh, it'll it'll give you the, the outcome that you're looking for. But as long as you you know you know you know you're doing what you you want to do, you'll be fine. I right, give us some advice because right now we're in a pandemic, and of course everything some things are shut down. Workouts are difficult. There are no sports going on right now. The Ohio State athletic director made a very good point about football this fall. If it's not safe for the fans who are bunched up together like this, how is it safe for athletes? 
Um, I, well, I, I would second that. I actually haven't heard or, or, or seen the footage, but I do. I second that. Um, I, I don't think it's a good idea for anyone to be gathering at, as we, we've already been advised not to do so. So there should be no difference as far as football or any other sports as far as the, the 10 plus rule. Right, because restaurants can't do it, nobody can do it. Right. Obviously the essentials like grocery stores, we know that, but of course sports get your mind off of it, yes. so you can definitely work out and exercise by yourself. Yes. You don't need a group to go exercise. You don't. You get don't. some fresh air. Definitely, That's and that's something that I've, uh, my son and I have you know, started to do and create a small workout um, for ourselves, just something to keep us going, keep our, our minds a little at ease, and again, to you know, stay physically fit a little. You know, um, I know for myself, um, I think daily I was making maybe roughly 10,000 steps, and you know, when I'm not working out or working, I'm sorry, when I'm not working, it, the, the steps are very low, <laughs> very low. <laughs> because it's tough to get off the couch sometimes. Yes, Larry. it is. You it gotta is. you gotta self motivate yourself. All right, when you were okay. working day-to-day -day with students, what was it like as a guidance counselor? What have you learned about it with the young kids of the Achievable Dream? Well, well I, I, I mean, I miss them. I miss them dearly. I just want to put that out there. I really miss the, the students. That's my motivation, just them alone. Um, <clears throat> it, it just being there, you know, to advocate for them, to, you know, push them to, you know, want to want to be better, teaching them some different, you know, different character, character traits. That was one of my biggest, uh, my biggest tasks in the school. You know, teaching different character traits. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think. Give them that little seven magic, right? Yes. That was your number, right? Number seven. Number yes. seven. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, because the better the role models they have, that helps them as they get into middle school and high school. That's correct. Because they have different challenges then. Mm -hmm. um, and, and as I'm thinking of, as May is our character trait is self-discipline, actually. So um, this will be a great time again. I like to, you know, I like to remind them: you got to look in the mirror. The person who's responsible, the person who's respectful, is the person that's in the mirror. You learn it, and you have to apply it. I think that's true right now because there's no school going on. That they need to still have structure at home as well. Definitely, and again, for for many of them, um, the, the, the the you know, for the elementary students, the younger ones, they're still, you know, for, uh, they're still kind of basing it on the guidance of the adults. And um, some of our older students, the fifth graders, fourth graders and all, they're very mature and they're able to you know, own some of the things that they're doing themselves, which is a great thing. And we've had the, the focus on Achievable Dream on sports highlights before, but it's, people don't realize it's part of Virginia Beach, part of the Richmond area, yes. and of course Newport News. Yes, they're, they're seems, they seem to be, have been expanding a lot because it's a wonderful program. Um, this is only my second year there and I love it. Um, our, our administration in the school, um, you know, Ms. Harris, Tara Harris, Miss um, <clears throat> Murphy, and Mr. Hurdle, they, they've done a wonderful job um, to me, and I, I love the love that they have for the students. That's that was my favorite thing once I once I joined the team. How about some of the places you were at before you got to Achievable Dream? Um, so I first started off on uh, at General Stanford, which is on Fort Eustis Base, um, and again I had a you know I, I enjoyed that experience. I also at uh, Hidenwood. I was at Hidenwood for two years as well. But starting off, I was at General Stanford for four years, I believe. And it, it, it's just, it's a lot of love. You know, no matter where I go, the students are my motivation. So it doesn't matter what happens or where I go. Speaking of motivation, when you see that field out there, <laughs> does that get your juices flowing a little bit? Oh, man. You're so lot, close to it right a now. A lot of memories. A lot yeah. of memories. And like you said, the, 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 the pack house, what, that, that one particular time, it's just, it, it was it was lovely. It was lovely, you know, just to have all of you know the city supporting us, pushing us, and just appreciating you know the the work that we put in. And life is full of obstacles, folks. I'll tell you, one of my dear friends, we've interviewed him on this program, Elton Brown. He played for Heritage and Hampton. Is a good example. If you get knocked down, you can get right back up. And he is a good example of that. He got knocked down. Yes. He got right back up. Had a great career in Virginia. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. He, he's. Uh, I also worked with him, and uh, at the uh, what was the name? The, the rec league, the rec league team, uh, where we co where I coached with them. 
Um, good guy. I mean, I always, always appreciate, you know, the work and his knowledge in the, in the area, in the field. So he's a really good guy. Yeah, you mentioned some of the memories out here and just the field still looks good no matter what. And uh, really, it's not, you don't need a whole lot to get a workout in. Mm -mm. You can just walk, you can run, you can do anything. So we're lucky that we can be out in this fresh air. Yeah. Like we talked about before the show started, getting back to basics yourself. Mm -hmm. and Old that, school. Yeah, uh, like my son and I, we'll, we'll just take some walks or, you know, just uh, short walks around in, in the area. Um, <clears throat> and a lot of, you know, a lot of push-ups, a lot of sit-ups. Try not to, you know, put on too much weight too fast. Yeah. You know, some things are inevitable, but we still have to find ways, you know, to, to get that physical uh, physical assertion out of us. Right. What are your future goals as far as being a guidance counselor? Uh, I, I, honestly, the only thing I really have right as of the moment is wanting to um, get my LPC, Licensed Professor Counseling, mm -hmm. where I'll be able to assist um, not just in the school system but outside as well. Um, be able to counsel, you know, um, marriage, family, PTSD, those types of areas. So I'll be able to, to work with, with students. But um, I mean, I'm sorry, I work with outside area adults and all. But the school system, I absolutely love it. And, you know, I'm a part of a part of it. I'm a product of our school, uh, Nupa News area. So I love it. And I really don't see me going anywhere. So getting that next degree is not something that I'm trying to do to move forward or, or get away from here. But it's just something, an, an added credential that I'm thinking of. Like a lot of us, we might have gone off to college in different places, living, but Newport News is home for you. Newport News is home for me. I love it here. Yeah, exactly. As we're talking the final few moments here with Larry Choo Choo Davis, you mentioned Hampton. Were there any other rivalries that stood out in high school? Um, definitely Warwick. Mm -hmm. Warwick was one of our, that was our, uh, you know, kind of uh, hometown rivalry because, you know, we lived in the same areas where some of the, you know, the Raiders lived as well. Um, <clears throat> but, I mean, that was probably our biggest. And then uh, Fevers became, started becoming pretty big as well. So we wanted to, you know, that was a, a good rival for us as well. I had, we, I had to ask you, what do you remember about Antoine Womack? Antoine Womack. Um, of course, he played for Phoebus too, and, and uh, you mentioned Phoebus and the late Bill D. But yeah, D had some really good teams. Yes, yes. Um, so again, they they came. I want to say they came right after us, yeah. in which they started to kind of dominate the area, and uh, um, so we we kind of looked back. At, of course, we were still doing our own thing off in college and all, but we noticed that they they were doing some pretty good things. Well, you're a great example of a, a Newport News School student that graduated went on to prep school, went on to Morgan State, and is now succeeding in the Newport New School System as a guidance counselor. Thank you for all your time, for sharing your, your thoughts and memories yes. here on the May edition of Sports Highlights. Oh, I really appreciate you guys having it. And, and like we talked about not long ago, um, you guys have done a wonderful job as far as covering um, everything that we've done back then. So we really appreciate you guys uh, very much. You know, um, I, I remember one question I think you asked me right after the the state championship game, and and, and you said, "What did we want? What did we want?" Uh, kind of, it was it was similar to what did you what did we want our legacy to be? Mm -hmm. And it was, and it's still the same. We wanted the the the, the Nupa News, you know, natives to know we did this for us. That was that was one thing I can't remember. And the century started with them winning the state championship. And those are some great memories. I mean, it was cold that day, yes. remember, but you dominated Dinwiddie. Yes, yes. We, we had a pretty, we felt confident going into that game um, because we knew where we had come from. We knew with the work that we had put in, so we, we were ready to, you know, kind of put a cap on it. And that was the old city stadium at the University of Richmond. Yes. All the best, Larry Davis. Thank you. All right, Larry Davis right there sharing some great classic memories of his childhood, of his prep school, of his high school, of his college, and of course, of his career today in the Newport News School on our May edition of Sports Highlights. So for Elijah Price and Ray Price and Larry Choo Choo Davis, number seven, I'm Greg Bickaveras. We'll talk to you soon.